During the Second World War, inside of the concentration camps there were thousands of SS guards and workers who made the lives of prisoners a misery. The SS were responsible for the runnings of the camps, and they would execute thousands of inmates for minor infractions of the rules, and would treat people terribly. One woman who was known for her evil treatment was Irma Grazer, who was known as a beautiful beast, and she was just 22 when she was executed for her crimes, which included murdering with a pistol. She was also known for selecting victims to go to their deaths inside of the gas chambers, and the evidence against her was compelling, but also disgusting. People could not believe that a young 22-year-old girl, who had her whole life ahead of her, could stoop to such lows, and be guilty of such harrowing behaviour. But there was an SS officer, who was rather senior, and served inside of a number of different camps and sites, and Johann Niemann would get a brutal comeuppance, as he was brutally killed during a prisoner uprising, as he was attacked by Axe. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Johann Niemann, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Johann Niemann was born in August 1913, and it's believed he had a normal upbringing, but his teenage years were dominated by the rise of the Nazi party. At the age of 18 he joined as a member of the Nazis, and three years later at the age of 21 he joined the SS, the paramilitary group run by Heinrich Himmler. He was given training inside the SS, but as the Second World War began, he was then sent to go and work at the Belzec Extermination Centre. This site was built with the sole and only purpose as to kill as many Polish Jews as possible. The camp operated from March 1942 to June 1943 and was found near to Lublin. It's believed that between 430,000 to 500,000 Jews were murdered at Belzec by the SS and this made it the third deadliest camp of the Second World War. Shockingly, only seven people who were forced to perform slave labour would survive Belzec and there was a lack of witnesses due to the sheer amount of people who were killed there. Neiman was tasked with commanding Camp 2, which was considered the extermination area of the site. Prisoners would be offloaded from two train stations. They were then taken to Camp 1, which was the unloading area. There were two barracks here, where men and women would undress. They were then led and forced towards Camp 2, which was where the gas chambers were. The two zones were screened off from each other, and SS guards would drive people into the gas chambers, where they were beaten and even shot if they did not run as quickly as they could, to their deaths. Johann Niemann was in charge of making sure that the extermination part of Belzec ran as smoothly and as efficiently as possible, and he was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands. Following his work there, he was then moved to Sobribor, which was another extermination camp which was set up. This was also found within Poland, and the majority of prisoners who were sent to Sobribor were killed, within hours of their arrival. In total, up to a quarter of a million people were killed there, making it the fourth deadliest Nazi site. There were roughly 600 inmates who were forced to help in the deadly running of the site, and these were killed to make sure that the true crimes of Sobribor did not get out. One element of the camp was Lager Free, in which a special unit of prisoners were forced to help in the extermination process, and they would remove bodies, search them for valuables, and also scrub the gas chambers clean. They were in charge of disposing of the remains too, and it was very hard physical work, but it took an immense psychological toll on the workers. None of the workers from this part of Sobribor ever survived. Whilst at Sobribor, Niemann was a deputy commander of the site, and he stepped up a number of times before Heinrich Himmler gave him the position permanently. He was running the killing operation on a daily basis, and he was promoted by Himmler to become an SS Untersturmführer. Niemann was known for being a brutal and barbaric commander of the site, who became obsessed with ruthless efficiency and with executing as many people as he could inside the gas chambers. Another commander of the site would state that there was talk of a prisoner revolt, and when he heard of it, Niemann dealt with it horrifically. It was said, a Polish carpo told me that some Dutch Jews were organising an escape, so I relayed it back to Commandant Niemann, and he ordered the 72 Jews to be executed immediately but an uprising would take place at Sobribor, and this later led to the closure of the site, and Johann Niemann would be killed during it in brutal fashion. The revolt began in the afternoon of the 14th of October 1943, and it was planned for prisoners to lure SS officers to quiet locations and to murder them. 
This would occur in the hour before roll call, and the second phase would see the prisoners marching to freedom from the front gate. At 4pm, Deputy Commandant Johann Niemann rode up on his horse to Lager 1's tailor's barracks. The head tailor at the site had arranged an appointment for him to be fitted for a leather jacket, which had been stolen from a Jew that had been killed. But the plotters had prioritised Neiman's execution and killing. He was acting as the commandant whilst the commandant was on leave, and they wanted Neiman dead, as they believed if the plan failed, the death of a senior SS officer would send a clear message to the hierarchy and to Himmler. But as he entered the tailors, Neiman noticed that there was a Russian prisoner inside of the shop, armed with an axe. Neiman asked him what he was doing there, and the Russian explained that he was there to repair a table inside of the tailors. Neiman thought nothing of this, and he was then asked to remove his pistol holster and put the stolen jacket on, and he was asked to turn around to check if there were any alterations which were needed to be made. However, when he turned, he was set upon by two prisoners who smashed him to pieces with their axes. They battered him with the sharp instruments and split his head wide open. There was blood and matter all over the floor of the tailor's shop, and Neiman, the ruthless SS officer, had been brutally killed. His body was then shoved and hidden under a table, and the blood was covered up with sawdust to conceal what had actually happened. He had been horrifically killed, and was one of the first victims of the Sobribor uprising, but he did deserve his fate. Following his killing, other officers and SS members of staff were killed in various areas of the site, and one was being killed every six minutes for the next hour. But the Sobribor uprising caused a significant amount of damage to the camp, and a group of prisoners managed to flee the camp, but most of them were rounded up by the SS and other police organisations that pursued them. At 8pm, four hours after he was killed, Johann Niemann's body was found in the tailor's barracks. But days later, Himmler ordered the camp to be closed, and they then demolished the gas chambers and most of the camp's buildings. Johann Niemann was a brutal and savage SS guard who was known for his terrible treatment of inmates and he drove thousands to their deaths. He also had a past working in the Action T4 euthanasia sites across Germany and would force people to deal with the clean-up operation after the gas chambers had been turned on. He was a real brute of a man and he would parade around extermination camps on horseback but inside of Sobribor he was killed by two men that were armed with sharp axes and it brought a violent end to the life of the man who was responsible for the exterminations and executions of thousands. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.